There he is. Now. Welcome to the neighborhood of Sachida. I made the horrible mistake uh -oh. of not really capturing Nietzsche oh. and really getting him to speak. Yeah. And I think that it's in these first few moments yeah. that we get the best of the video because <laughs> we forget. So why don't you just lead me to your place? Good, good. I just want to point out first that uh, my wife's ancestors, I can, I can see exactly the grave, but uh, generations are all uh, buried, uh, interred right up there. A lot of new housing here. Yeah, and um, my father-in-law grew up in the area. It was all rice fields here. Huh? And you'll see, like, this is all kind of new built here. Yeah. And then when we cross the street into our laneway, uh -huh. suddenly we step back in time 100 years. And it goes from rice field to one of these prefabby houses yeah. in 30 days. Yeah. And the trend is no windows. Or, or like little tiny slits as windows right, exactly. because let's face it they cover it up anyway I mean right and someone's gonna come and build something next to you anyway so yeah you know where I'm from in Vancouver the view corridors we're gonna no jaywalk oh no oh no oh no I'm getting a heart attack uh, so look at this black I mean yeah. black is such a popular um, exterior color yeah. here and it's not in the West because black is just like it means death and tar this looks like uh, like a heavy metal band clubhouse with this little emblem yeah, on the wall. Yeah, they really, yeah, it's funny when they embellish, they just, they go over the top. So the big windows in Vancouver and everyone's very protective of their view corridor. But here everyone just assumes that someone's going to build something right next door. So what's the use of having big, uh, big windows? Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So now we cross the street. <laughs> all of a sudden these are all pre-war, Meiji era. Look at the ceramic uh, roofs. Yeah. This one just got beautiful on house. a significant renovation. It's getting really dilapidated. Um, this one's in beautiful shape. And the back side of it is an old kimono shop that's been closed for decades. But lovely garden. So this is our this is, this is us right up here. So this is the little laneway that you avoided. And yeah, this wouldn't have been good for me, Dave. Not yeah. not as a first time. No, I would have no. okay. we've had a lot of cars go in there. Yeah, it's no fun. Yeah. It's no fun. And this is my dog. But my so my father grew up here mostly with, uh, with, as an only child, mostly with his, his mother. Mm. And when he married, they built what we call the cottage. And they lived here for a little while when my wife was a little girl, but then moved to the city and father-in-law and mother-in-law did their lives and careers. You know, father-in-law worked as a civil engineer for the city. Mother-in-law worked at the university being a teacher for children's education. And this house fell into disrepair and for 20 years no one was in this house and uh, it was falling in on itself and my darling wife when she finished university uh, she studied forestry and on tree arboristine she moved back and sort of brought the cottage back to life and the parents followed and did a big renovation and you see the before and after pictures of this house and before it was just like you know throw a match on it and now it's it's uh, it's fantastic, and so we get the best of both worlds, where we get the big windows, double glazed windows, but still have all the j traditional Japan lines. Under the metal roof is still the thatching, so when we go up into the eaves, there's a little loft up there, and it feels like, meanwhile, back in a Miyazaki movie. And then in the back, where we're going to go uh, later in just a moment, is the Kura barn. And then this is my wife's Naya, her tool shed. So all her uh, landscape design, forestry, arboristine tools, all her ladders and chainsaws, and all that live in here. And then this, and that's the yakisugi, the charcoal cypress siding, which is brilliant. This is one of the great things about Japanese construction. And you can see on our on our cottage there, this closest room to us here, a year and a half, two years ago, that was not there. And the next step is solar panels going on here because we have this great western, uh, eastern western uh, sight lines here. So solar panels are going up there on the second floor and on this uh, roof here. So we'll be uh, self-sufficient off the grid. 
What's a kura? A kura is a storehouse. And traditionally, Japanese houses were, they're quite open, right? You know, walls and so on. So they weren't very secure. So all the valuables being kept away from both thieves and vermin were kept in these storehouses. So this is like 18 inch thick mud plaster walls. And then there's triple doors on it. There's actually three doors. And so everything valuable from like the foods and the grains and whatever to golds and precious china or whatever you have would be in here. Now it's, uh, it's in fantastic shape. And when this house was renovated a few, uh, maybe 10 years ago, this was completely overgrown all around here with bamboo. And they cut it down and the builder was like, you know, this is in great shape. And now it's like it was here waiting for me for years to bring in a huge collection of records and books. Fantastic. Here's the key, right? That's ancient. Yeah. <laughs> Triple doors. Oh. So this is kind of like the storage room and the playroom and the jam room. And there's the secondary record player here. But we're going to go upstairs to the... Uh, to the extra fun area. And I'm gonna take this up and I'm gonna shut the door behind it. It takes a while to get used to these narrow steps in Japan. It, it does, yeah. It's a little tricky, so. Yeah, no, no, I know, I know. Put your gear there. Okay. Because I don't want to die. Okay. Dun, da, dun, da, dun. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're expecting. That's great. I feel so special, <laughs> so special. Yeah, so this is, uh, and this originally was just a big open space here. There's a, there's a piece of wood that slides out from uh, the top of these stairs to close off this gap, mm -hmm. but it was just a big open hole in the floor. Yeah. So we put up this, uh, this railing around here with a little safety door. Sure. So I'm gonna close that front door. Okay. Have a seat and make yourself comfortable. We'll have some coffee and we're gonna play some right now. Absolutely. Look at this. This, my friends is the GT2000 and it says gigantic and tremendous not bad where are the speakers where are all the speakers hmm where are the speakers? Oh, there they are. There, there they are. One here. Yeah. So you're using two bookshelves. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, there's always a possibility to upgrade. But, well, what happened is when this, all this came here, all my stuff, everything you see here, came from a storage locker in Canada and showed up here about two and a half, three years ago. Rather than going there and trying to pack it up during pandemic and doing quarantines on both sides, I just threw money and said, load it all up. And so it started with, I have, um, I had a Sony turntable in my old stuff and an Onkyo components. They're just kind of a cheap and cheerful set. And I was like, well, so then I got a new turntable, which uh, got relegated now to the first floor because one of my doctors, whenever I go to his office, he has a gorgeous turntable and a huge collection of classical records. And he sees that I appreciate it. I always flip the records and he's like, you know, I have my old record player. Are you interested? I'm like, oh yes, tell me more. So he comes on his day off with uh, his son and another buddy and the three of them and me hold this thing, which is about uh, 55 kilograms. Cause this is the cast iron exoske exoskeleton on it. Which was, which was an extra or it shipped with the unit? Um, some of them came with and some of them didn't is what, okay. I, was what I've learned. I've never seen before. Because you can see here that um, yeah. it might just be this section or some came with this. So it's it's like completely overbuilt and it's fully manual. There's no auto return oh, on yeah. it. Oh, yeah. And so it he brought this and I tried to connect it to the amp I had. And the amp I had didn't have the, the appropriate phono inputs. And so I said, and plus it just... This deserves something better. Sure. So, with the wonderful second-hand stores uh, or site on a Mercado, yep, I found um, I wanted similar vintage. So this is like kind of early '80s peak bubble time Japan when Japan was oozing in cash and wanted the best. Everyone wanted the best of everything, right? Yeah. And this is peak bubble. 
Um, this platen alone is like a 25 pound piece of aluminum that would decapitate you. And so I wanted something sort of matched with it. So I found this, it's an uh, early vintage Yamaha and it has three phono inputs, including the phono C input, which I'm not an audiophile enough to understand why, but this requires an, a phono C. What is and, that? Well, I, that is a, I don't know, but it says it on the, on the cartridge. So one of your one of your uh, probably one of your dead. viewers yeah. will will educate me about oh this. yeah because I'm just you know I'm sort of flying blind. I found a great uh, place called Liquid Audio in Australia who had a whole breakdown about the history and the makings of all of this, and he re recommended I replace the cartridge and budget a couple thousand dollars for that. I'm I was like, sorry, you got the wrong guy. <laughs> I need to make this work. So. Um, so I, I was fuddling around with it. I, I tried a, a tube preamp in between and it just made it sound worse. And uh, one day a, a gent was over tuning my wife's piano. He saw that I liked records and I'm like, come out to my kurta. And he was like, what are you talking about? Because no one has a space like this in a kurta, right? And he came out here and he sat down uh, in the, the chair in the perfect center and he's like, I had one of the speakers here, and he's like, no, 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 that's gotta go up here, no, no, that's not. And then he started fiddling around, and he was the one that showed me the Phono C, and the inputs, redid, uh, uh, tweaked a, a few of the settings, um, we moved some things around, and it, and it got sounding uh, much better. So this system, what's been here in three years, it's changed three different times. Okay. And the only thing that I bought new was this, uh, Tiak, unit which is a cd cassette and usb and this is like my little swiss army knife it's, what year is this? is this recent yeah this is a recent build okay and this is just um it's kind of cheap and cheerful but i wanted something uh to be able to transfer some formats sure because i have a lot of cds and cassettes that are buddy made on his four track when i used to go to south by southwest there was always guys saying hey here's my cd so stuff that's not on streaming services and i and i just yeah, I'm just not a guy who uses streaming services and in here there's no internet. I could put a repeater in here but I specifically keep this no internet because if I have internet in here all of a sudden You're not listening it turns to music. in and so this is like my little uh, sanctuary um, from all of that. So I have fun making mixed cassette tapes and burn CDs of my own creations mm -hmm. and mailing them off to friends because in my stuff I found a bunch of blank cassettes, a bunch of burnable CDs. That I'm was like, in storage. Yeah, you might yeah. as well put it to use. Yeah. So this, I can take, I can go from USB to cassette, which is nobody, who does that? Right, right. right. Um, but the main thing that gets used, obviously, is this beautiful record player. It's beautiful. Yeah. So let's pour some coffee yep. and then let's play some records.